Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from the Tiki Architect channel. Today we will be doing a book review for Practical Model Driven Enterprise Architecture. Design a mature enterprise architecture repository using Sparks System Enterprise Architect and Archimate 3.1. So without any further ado, let's start the book review. This presentation will be shared on slide share after the video recording. And you will find in the video description a link to a blog post having all the required links if you want to review uh, the links included in this presentation. I just want to highlight that I am doing technical book reviews for the purpose of providing an objective feedback for potential readers of such books and also uh, providing constructive feedback for the authors as well. About today's authors, I have provided both uh, the LinkedIn profile for Mr. Mudar Bahri and uh, also Mr. Joe Williams. And if you go through the LinkedIn profile, you will find that they are having a long uh, experience in the field of the architecture. And this was very clear while you were reading the book. The book itself, it is already available in multiple platforms, including back to the original publisher and Amazon and O'Reilly. For me, I just wanted to highlight that this book review, it is not sponsored by any company or any someone, and I have already purchased a soft copy from the book from my money. That's why whatever you are seeing as of today is representing my opinion about the book. I will go quickly through the topic that is covered in this book. I think uh, the first chapter, it was the longest one and uh, because it was, was including to give agile enterprise architecture and where to start in any organization, the enterprise architecture practice. Also, it is having a lot of focus on the deliverables of the artifacts of enterprise architecture. Here also in this chapter, it was introducing uh, the uh, Archimate and what is the meta models and uh, the tool that will be used across the whole book, which is Sparks Enterprise Architect. For chapter two, I will leave it for the next slide because I want to go through in details about the practice uh, scenarios. But uh, chapter three, four, five, six, and seven and eight, they are very heavily focused on Archimate 3.1. And uh, Sparks Enterprise Architecture uh, Architect Tool, uh, the focus it was in the first, uh, third, and fourth chapter. And then, because you already get trained how to use the tool, uh, it is your role while you are reading the book in order to practice uh, in chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8, and 9 later. And the last uh, two chapters, number 10 and 11, it is mainly focused on uh, Sparks Enterprise Architect as a tool and how to operate the enterprise repository and also how to publish your model, how to create templates for it. I liked the book because uh, it was, even from its title, it is called Practical. And uh, I am really a practical enterprise architect and a solution architect as well. That's why I wanted to highlight the three scenarios that are mentioned in the second chapter of this book because I, am, I don't think any enterprise architect working in any organization, he will miss a scenario like this. It will be always required from the enterprise architect as an example here. They were giving an example about a ABC trading company working actually in wholesales. And they were having a trading uh, web application and they wanted to introduce a mobile app and this app is mainly for tracking application for their fleet uh, and whatever transportation and it is will be having some of the features from the web as well second the second scenario it is to analyze the existing IT assets software and the hardware and consider replacing, merging, eliminating or reducing them. This is sometimes called optimization of your uh, IT and providing efficiency of your resources. 
provide a dependency report to show which applications are using each IT asset to help assess the impact, which is also a very common practice for any enterprise architect in an organization. And for chapters 8 and 9, uh, and especially you will find this book, it is written in the year 2022, so it is actually after the COVID. So ABC Trading Company, which is acting, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for wholesales, it started a new online retail sales to sell goods directly to customers. So these two chapters, they were covering the business architecture model, how they are in, uh, having the strategy, the as-is, and the to-be scenarios. As you can see from these three scenarios that are the main focus of the book, any enterprise architect will be exposed to one of these scenarios while he is working, 100%. That's why this uh, makes the book very practical. About what I liked in the first edition of this book, that the notes and the best practices sections, and they are actually a lot across the whole chapters of the book, they are, they are including a lot of helpful advices which I think they are best suited for uh, uh, architects with no mentor. Second, uh, chapter uh, number three, it was uh, starting about which one to start with, a meta model, building a meta model and investing in a meta model, or start with your model, uh, or reverse even engineer uh, what you are having from uh, your organization. And the choosing actually to start with the model, which indicates the same way I'm trying also uh, to emphasize as a practical way because I found a lot of enterprise ar architects, they spend a lot of time trying to making the meta model perfect from day one and they spend a lot of time. But actually uh, working on the model and presenting the results and outcome and the benefits for the organization always comes in the first place and the meta model can be changed at any point of time and based on the needs that 100% you will be facing while you are working on your daily work you will find sometimes you need to change the meta model adding some fields some relations in the extreme customizing also the meta model that's why starting with the model and I think also it was a good choice from the uh, authors of the book to the end of chapter four i found a very good viable and best practices advices for the diagrams of the enterprise architects and actually i find um, a lot of architects they are facing such issues and i will be recommending if you are facing such issues in how to have your diagrams in presentable way uh, for the audience I will be recommending the book Communication Patterns, which is actually a very good book that is handling the visual advices for anyone, starting from a team leader, for solution architect, for enterprise architect. And it is full of examples and patterns and anti-patterns as well. And I think I need to do a book review for this one as well, because it is actually very, very good. Um, I think it might be the only focused book on actual implementation of enterprise architecture repository. You will find in the specification of TOGAF or any framework, they are talking about the enterprise architecture repository, but there is no details about how to build one or whatever. Till the moment I purchased the book, I think, I think it is the only one which is focused on building an enterprise architecture repository. I don't think uh, uh, another book is focused on this area. The book is having an accompanied GitHub repository, which I really find very helpful. It was including the enterprise architecture uh, repository itself after every chapter. If you are not uh, uh, using the, uh, you are not doing all the examples by yourself, but even some Excel sheets regarding the servers and whatever, instead of you, you are filling this in uh, information to fill the Sparks enterprise architect was ready for you, which I think it was very good idea. And also the author is, uh, uh, providing a free PDF, colored PDF for all the diagrams and even you can download it as of uh, now from uh, this link. And I think they might uh, provide this PDF 
Uh, because maybe some people use the Kindle device or grayscale viewers or whatever, so they might uh, require this PDF because actually the the diagrams are uh, uh, using uh, various colors. Also, for non-English speaker, uh, the book is using a s- very simple English. Yeah, and for me, I found, I think, I, I, I looked up a word in the dictionary, I think, only twice while I'm reading the whole book. Here I am mentioning what I would like to see in the next edition of the book. I wish the scenario and the artifacts backlog and user stories can be represented in visual way. You will find when uh, the uh, authors were breaking the scenarios, the three scenarios I have already mentioned, they were mentioning the artifacts, user stories, and whatever, but it all uh, uh, having textual representation. I hope if they can have it in some visual way with some links, so it will be appealing. Maybe because I'm, uh, this part was new for me and I did not use this way of working before. In uh, chapter 5, creating a viewpoint was mentioned that it is beyond the scope of this book. Which I think because we have been working in uh, the field of uh, and using the tool but another tools. Then I think having or creating a specialized viewpoint it is a mandatory step while I'm building an architecture repository. And even customizing this viewpoint in order to make sure I am having a proper governors for if I, especially if I'm having uh, multiple architecture uh, enterprise architecture team that they are working together. But anyway, I included uh, the link and it is not a big deal uh, for creating custom meta model diagram view. And it is included here if you would like to see how it is being done in Sparks as well. To... Um, the second point which I, I, I did not find a, a solution for it because the authors they wanted to maintain the copyright and they were having a lot of material they are referring to especially the Archimedes Archimede version 3.1 while I was reading the book actually Archimedes 3.2 was introduced from quite some months now even um, so what happened, I found most of the links in the book, it is not working. The problem is actually from uh, the open group itself, uh, because they did not maintain, they did not maintain the older link or whatever. But and I think if um, the authors will be producing a next version from this one, maybe mentioning uh, the chapter and mentioning the section and the diagram, it will, while beside the link, this will be easier for us as a readers in order to go and check the specification because you will be doing this a lot while you are reading the book. The fourth item here, uh, customized more realistic technology notation related examples in chapter six and seven. Chapter six and seven, they are using the standard notation uh, for the technology part, which is something like the servers networking and whatever of uh, the Archimate. The Archimate may be from my point of view and I'm already certified in Archimate and um, if you would like to see some videos from our uh, from my channel you will find videos how to pass the certification for Archimate. You will find other related and um, if you would like to have uh, another live session because I have made it in Arabic language for uh, some of my friends I have made two sessions uh, in Archimate. Uh, previously I can do one in English if you are requesting so please if you would like you can comment put a comment and I will make a live session so I can accept also questions and uh, I can do uh, some online answering for this uh, topic because and I think it is actually very important and Archimate is covering a lot uh, a lot of gaps not included in other notations Returning back to this point, the technology part, the technology part regarding servers, nodes, uh, uh, networking, I don't think Archimate is suitable notation for representing this. And this is my own opinion. It is not uh, a mandatory, but I find when I am working with an infrastructure architecture uh, team, uh, multiple teams, normally the people will be using 
Microsoft Visio, they will be using Draw.io, other tools that is having better visualization, better visualization for this node and the technology port. So maybe, maybe if in the next version of uh, the book to have how to customize this uh, uh, notation from Archimedes, and by the way, it is it is uh, being supported already actually by Sparks. As an even an example, it will be more realistic. And actually, this is what I'm doing in my work as well. يعني. The last point is that the accompanied colored PDF, which I already mentioned, it is actually very recommended, especially if you will be using Kindle devices. Um, I missed the figure number or the caption of every diagram. And, and I think maybe it can be easily uh, corrected by having the figure number and the caption. So anyone will be using this PDF, he will be easily uh, navigating to the correct uh, image or diagram. My recommendations to potential readers of the book. At the book is having so many links and it is, I think it is the type of the book that you need to practice while you are reading, which is actually what I was doing. I think getting a soft copy and a PC, on a PC actually, is recommended rather than any Kindle device or a hard copy. And I am also recommending if you have a dual screen setup, it will be very good because actually you will be opening in one of the screens the book and you are taking notes. Uh, and maybe the other will be opening Sparks Enterprise and you are practicing uh, what you are actually uh, viewing in the book. Um, the dual screen is preferred, but if you are having something like the power tools or you can do a split screen or whatever, it's okay also as well. But I'm not thinking this is a book that you can read while you are on a couch or whatever. Um, it requires a lot of practice all the time through the whole chapters of the book. Um, setting the expectation of the potential readers, while the book is providing examples that is better than the examples mentioned in the Archimedes specs, and I can mention this very clearly because while I was studying for the Archimedes certification, I was studying from the, specific, uh, from the specification it's itself. I think it just provides a start point in Sparks Enterprise Architect. Yani the book is actually excelling in the Archimedes part. But for Sparks Enterprise Architects, the tool is more, more comprehensive. And I think covering a tool through a book, it is actually a very hard job. And I think the best way to cover the uh, capabilities of an enterprise architecture tool in, in general, not only Sparks, that to have either a video course or some sort of course from this company and here is specialized for sparks and i think they are having a very good sparks uh, uh, youtube channel where you will find their webinars they are recorded uh, all the new features they are presenting um, and i think the, their channel is quite good um, regarding uh, the book is already actually using uh, Sparks Enterprise Architecture version 15.2. While I, I, I was doing uh, the, all the exercises, I was using version 16.1, which is actually available now. And I think version 17 beta, it is available if you would like to download the beta version. Um, I did not find a major reference, a major difference, sorry. Uh, and it was minor and I was able to handle to handle uh, all the examples mentioned in the book even using the version 16.1 and I hope um, also this will be the case for the next version uh, for 17 inshallah. Here are some references if you would like and especially if you are interested in the Archimate you will find uh, several uh, uh, Archimate related videos and the blog post I have already here mentioned. And uh, if you find this uh, video helpful, please you can follow me on here. You will find the, our website and YouTube channel and LinkedIn. And if you find any enterprise architecture who is interested in this topic, please share this video. And I really thank you for your time.